Um, hello? Excuse me. Hey, up here. Yeah, what are you looking at? Welcome to Jaipur. It's a city in North India that's best known for food that is honestly far too rich for anybody's good, but also a royal family that has spanned literally hundreds of years. That is until recently when a young upstart, also called the Indian government, took away all their powers. And with that newfound power, the Indian government gave us all democracy and the power to own our own land, which I guess it worked out for us peasants after all. Now, the device I have in my ears are the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pros, which there's no way they'll live up to the hype I just presented, but they are also upstarts and judging by the way this device behaves, they're at least on their way to standing toe to toe with the giants and the stalwarts and that is worth talking about. <music> I guess a good place to start, as always, is to talk about build quality. Now, in a word, it's good. The case is good, the earbuds are good, all the seams seem very well jointed. I could find no fault with the moving parts, the edges, the joints, everything seemed pretty well put together. And I think, I think it's worth taking a moment to appreciate that even the devices that are not quite that expensive these days, they're pretty well made. So then it's probably a good time to talk about fit and comfort. Well, I'll tell you what's not comfortable, this is a bar stool. <sighs> fit and comfort. Okay, the case, it feels great. It reminds you of a pebble and who doesn't like a nice little pebble? This particular pebble is very slim so it fits in your pocket rather well. It's one of the most pocketable devices I've used lately and that's a good thing. Inside this pebble are two smaller pebbles the earbuds, which just happen to also be really, really good for long-term usage. The problem arises when you try and put the earbuds back into the case. See, because the shape of the earbuds is a little nondescript, it's not quite as defined as, say, a earbud with a stem design, putting them back in the case can be a little confusing, especially when the case has these indentations in which to put the earbuds, which Honestly, they're more like suggestions rather than proper deep indentations to fix the device. And because of that, even after hours and hours of usage, every time I try to put them back in, I never get it right the first time around. But on the flip side, every time I do get them right, I rejoice and I celebrate like I've done something wonderful. It's like they've left us a little mini game in the case. Now, the other problem is the way the earbuds fix themselves in your ear. They use a combination of silicon tips as well as wings, which means there are more things that you need to try out to get the right fit. Believe me, you want to try and get the right fit because if you don't, then the sound signature changes drastically. Now, on the one hand, the silicon tips are actually really comfortable, although they don't do much noise isolating. More on that later. The stem of the silicon tip actually has a plastic ring which acts as a fastener. So when you put these onto the earbuds, they just click in place. Honestly, one of the most easy to use silicon tip designs that I have. But the downside is, of course, third-party OEMs may not have a similar locking device and therefore you'll be stuck with the stock ones for a while. Now, on the other hand, the silicon wings, they're a little bit more fiddly and that's a bit of a pain. My suggestion to you is find the right tip size first, leave the tip on the earbud and then go through all the wings to see which one is the right fit for you. Now, to assist you in the fit, the accompanying app does have a fit test, but like all fit tests, it doesn't really work. The manual way is still the best way. And speaking of things like the fit test, this device comes with a bunch of features. Some of them are quite interesting. For example, multi-connect is a thing now. Uh, this device can be paired and be used and switched between more than one device. The caveat is you can only do this with AAC. The minute you switch to LDAC, it concentrates all its efforts and attentions onto one device alone. But there's also in-ear detection, a feature that I think is supremely important in this sort of device. In-ear detection in this case works as advertised, but it's a little bit slow on the uptick. So if you remove one earbud, it pauses your music. If you put it back in, it starts playing your music again. If you remove both earbuds, however, it pauses the music, but when you put them back in, it doesn't resume playback. I'm not sure why that is. But the thing is, if you don't like the way it works, you can only disable it. You can't customize it in the app. They don't give you that option. If you do happen to disable it, please bear in mind that if you take them out of your ear, music will continue playing and will continue draining the battery. And if you watch this video the whole way through, you'll see why you shouldn't do that. And trust me, you want to watch this one the whole way through. Now, when it comes to the app, it's got a few features, but there are three that I'd like to talk about in particular. Number one is the ability to customize touch controls. This has four levels of 
four levels of touch controls. Single, double, triple tap and tap and hold. It doesn't have swipe, would have been nice, but that's fine because these are supremely customizable. You can literally say a single tap on the right ear will increase volume, but a single tap on the left ear will pause and play music. That's fine. They allow you to do pretty much anything you want. Then comes the ability to change between noise cancelling and transparency mode. Now, this is something called Hear ID that they use to apparently customize the noise cancelling to your ear canals. I don't know what it does, but it doesn't seem to work. Um, if you don't use it, you've got one level of noise cancelling, which is the strongest. And if you do use it, it unlocks three levels of noise cancelling, weak, moderate and strong. In my opinion, strong is the only one that's worth using for reasons that I will explain in the next section of this video. The only reason I can see anyone going for weak or moderate is if you don't like that ear pressure feeling that you get when you use certain noise cancelling devices. However, there are enough reasons not to turn down noise cancelling on this one. Again, stay tuned, watch the whole video through and you'll understand what I mean. Now, the third thing I'd like to talk about is the ability to change equalization or sound profiles. In the app, you've got a whole bunch of sound profiles that actually work quite well and you can choose between them. But you can go one level deeper and actually use that as a starting point to customize it and make your own sound profile. Or if you want, you can make one from scratch. The point is whether you're a novice user or an expert user, everybody's got options and that is a very good thing. Which brings us neatly to the next segment of the video, possibly the one that everybody's been waiting for, active noise cancellation, transparency modes and sound quality. The way noise cancelling works is... You know what? Come with me. Namaste. Hello. Okay. This is better. Well, not really. It probably sounds horrible, it's chaotic, but that's the whole point. I think that this is the perfect place to test any active noise cancelling device of any sort. The Liberty 3 Pro is very clear in what it can or cannot do. Now imagine a line about yay high. Anything below the line can be cancelled out. And that includes engine sounds, the sound of tyres on the street and all the reverberations involved. But anything above that, which is basically the honking that you can hear in the background, people talking, that guy over there selling his wares incessantly loud, and that other guy over there who's bargaining with that guy, I don't know why, it's like $2, just give him the money, what are you doing? Like he has a family to feed, sir. What you, you know what? I'm not going to get into that. The point is, in this sort of scenario, the Liberty 3 Pro does an excellent job of cancelling everything that's below that line. Everything just vanishes, just like that. So imagine you've got these earbuds in your ear and you're on a bus. It's very quiet, nobody's talking, everybody's keeping to themselves and all you can hear is the sound of the bus. This will take those away and you'll have a nice quiet atmosphere to enjoy your music on. But now imagine you're on a school bus instead and you've got all the school kids laughing, crying, cheering, whatever, you know how it goes. All of those sounds cannot be cancelled. I'm not saying it does a bad job, I'm saying it doesn't do anything with those sounds. All of it get piped right into your ears. So in that scenario, you're going to have to turn the music even louder to overpower all the background noise. And that is absurd because the whole point of using in-ear monitors as opposed to earbuds is that it passively isolates the noise at the very least and allows you to listen to your music at lower volumes, thereby A, hearing more detail and B, saving your ears in the process. This does exactly the opposite. On the one hand, the silicon tips don't do a very good job of isolating anything. And on the other hand, the noise cancelling is limited to lower frequencies and are unable to handle anything beyond that. And now that is with music on. But what if you were using these devices to sit at a nice little cafe and you wanted to read a book? Well, again, if it's just air conditioning noise, that'll go away and this will work just fine. But the moment you're in a crowded cafe with a lot of people talking and that barista mispronouncing everybody's name and whacking something against the side of the coffee machine, all of that is going to come through and you're not going to have a very pleasant time. Noise cancelling is pretty much not going to work in this case. In fact, if you think about it, the actual transparency mode of these earbuds, they're not transparent. They actually amplify environmental sounds into your ear. But if you were using your active noise cancelling mode and if you turned off the music, everybody's voice just comes in clear at the original intended volume, sounding completely natural. It doesn't sound digitized at all. So in a way, inadvertently, by messing up their noise cancelling, Soundcore has actually made possibly their best transparency mode ever. So it's kind of like they've won by mistake. Which brings us neatly to sound quality. Now when we're talking about sound qual... You know what, I can't do this, it's too chaotic. Let's go find somewhere quieter.
All right, a little bit of peace and quiet, and we can talk about what's really important, sound quality. Now, straight out of the box, when you pair it with your device, it's going to use AAC only. If you want to change it to LDAC, you're going to have to go into the app and manually switch it over, but you only have to do this once, after which it'll remember your preference. Now, if you're using an iPhone, chances are you're stuck with AAC. So let's talk about that a little bit. On AAC, the Liberty 3 Pro suffers from a lot of the problems that all the devices in this category suffer. That is to say, the base is generally not very well defined, not very well detailed and lacks attack. The highs also tend to be quite hot and harsh. That's out of the box. With a little EQ, this does get better, but not to the extent that I would call it good sound quality. However, to the Liberty 3 Pro's credit, it makes sure that that bloated bass doesn't take over the other frequencies and doesn't make everything else sound muddied or veiled. And that's something that I don't find in its competitors. So that's definitely a good thing. Now, when you switch it up to LDAC, overall detail is increased, even in the bass, although I would say that it's still not where it should be it's a whole lot better than using AAC. On top of which the bass now gains an incredible amount of attack to the point where you could easily listen to hip hop or EDM and be very pleased with the results. You're gonna have a whale of a time. It also has a fair bit of bass and sub bass extension. And although the detail in my opinion is still lacking, at this point, I'm comparing it with its peers in the audio sphere, not just wireless earbuds, but earbuds in general. So there's a fair bit of detail. It's just not as good as it should be. One of the things about sound quality that kind of maintains across codecs, it doesn't matter if you're using AAC or LDAC, is the tonality overall. Now, when it comes to the mid frequencies, male vocals, that sort of thing, it's actually really good. When it comes to female voices though, they tend to sound a little thin and sharp. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not a representation of what they actually sound like. And it doesn't matter if you're listening to Florence and the Machines, Big God, or you're listening to that new Adele track, the effect is the same. The highs, unfortunately, remain harsh no matter what you do. Now, the app does allow you to choose a whole bunch of EQs, but you can use that as a starting point to make your own custom EQ, and I would implore you to do so because you can significantly increase the sound quality by doing that. Now, just as a starting point, here's a custom EQ that I have made that is not perfect. It's something I'm still working on, but it's probably a good starting point. You'll notice the highs have been pulled back quite a bit. Even then, at higher volumes, the harshness does come through. So this EQ, in conjunction with uh, low volumes or reasonable volumes, will tame those harsh highs to some extent. Another feature of the EQ is Hear ID. And how it works is very similar to if you walked into a clinic and got your ears tested. Basically, they play a whole bunch of tones at different frequencies, at different volumes, and then they ask you if you can hear it or not. Based on your response, it'll boost up those frequencies that you can't hear at lower volumes. In my opinion, this doesn't work very well because sometimes it boosts it up too much, and sometimes the boosted frequencies exacerbated the already existing issues the sound quality that I've highlighted before with respect to those highs. Now, despite the marketing material, soundstage is almost non-existent. It's like the whole band crawls into your head and does everything they have to do right in here. This is not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's a matter of preference. Ask any Sennheiser apologist. They would much prefer to call it an intimate soundstage. Just means that there's no soundstage. But where it lacks in soundstage, it more than makes up for in imaging. And what that means is if you're listening to music, these earbuds do a great job of placing each instrument where it's supposed to be, which means if you're listening to it, you can easily pinpoint where all the sounds are coming from, which is a beautiful thing and is really not easily accomplished at this price point. I'm truly impressed. What also impresses me is the cohesivity of the sound in total. It's very easy to have dual driver or triple driver IEMs that don't sound very cohesive, like all the drivers are fighting with each other and all they care about is their own frequency range. This one does not give me that impression, except for those highs. In the mids and the bass, the whole thing sounds far more cohesive and it sounds really, really nice. If you listen to Goat by Polyphia, those bell sounds at the beginning, they come across beautifully. Male vocals come across beautifully. If you're using LDAC, bass lines are rendered with great amount of definition, even if not great detail. And overall, the sound quality is pretty darn good for a wireless earbud. When it comes to wired IEMs, Look, I'll be honest, none of these really compete at that level. But this is a step forward in the right direction. This is a leap forward compared to some of its competitors. And therefore, I'd say out of the box sound quality is pretty good, but requires EQ. If you step it up to LDAC, and if you EQ it just right, these things are going to keep you happy for a very long time. Which brings us to battery life. Now, once again, despite their marketing claims of eight hours on a single charge, you don't get anywhere close to that. The only way you will get eight hours of charge or anything thereabouts is if you use it with AAC with active noise cancellation off 
all the time. Then maybe you can get close to seven hours, 45, seven hours, 50 minutes. But if you use this as I think you should use it with LDAC on and with active noise cancellation on all the time, with music running at about 50% volume, I struggle to get more than four hours and 15 minutes. And that is realistically what you can expect around the four hour mark. Normally I don't stress out about battery life because you've got that quick charge functionality. In my testing, 15 minutes of charge will get you around an hour of runtime, which again is not the fastest thing that's out there. So I don't know if it's because the battery inside it is small or because the battery management via software is just not up to the mark, but battery life is definitely something that's subpar and something Soundcore needs to work on. So in summary, the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro has a very comfortable case with very comfortable earbuds inside. They're a little fidgety to find the fit the first time around. Once you do it, you're done. The app works really well, the features work really well and are pretty well thought out for the most part. However, Hear ID doesn't really work, not for active noise cancelling and not for sound quality either. When it comes to active noise cancelling, it's a weird mix. In certain situations, if you're in a quieter place with just bass sounds, then you're going to have a great experience. If you have a combination of low and high frequencies, then all of that is going to come through and it's not going to work as you think it's going to work. It's nowhere close to the best in the market. But in a weird twist of fate, it happens to also be the best transparency mode out there. Just don't use the actual transparency mode, which will just make everything louder. It's just not very pleasant. Battery life is a pain. It's only four hours. And even someone who doesn't listen for that long a time, even I am bothered by the battery life, so you should be too. But the most important thing, the reason you buy this device is for that high-res audio. And I can guarantee you that under $150, you'd be hard-pressed to find another device that gives you this level of sound quality, this level of detail and cohesivity, provided you take the time to equalize it a bit and provided you use it with LDAC. It's not quite at the level where it's going to take on the best in the business, let alone its wired competitors, but it's a significant step forward from anything we've seen so far, and that is definitely a step in the right direction. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go help myself to some of that ridiculously unhealthy food you get here. Till next time, stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste. Okay, this is a call quality test, a microphone test for the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro. I'm in a quiet room, the AC is on, but it's really very quiet. So yeah, this is what I sound like. Normal volume, normal voice, as if I was taking a phone call and suddenly, magically, we are in a cafe, a very noisy cafe. And I'm going to move around a little bit so you can see how it sounds when the cafe sounds are coming through different angles into the earbuds. And yeah, this is me talking normally in a cafe environment. Ta-da!